Hey friends, you're listening to Changing the Conversation, a podcast by African Leadership and the Mocha Club, where we take time to sit down and explore topics to challenge our perspective in pursuit of better loving people and the world around us. So this is a work in progress, obviously, being episode one. You know why? Because we are a work in progress. We are a work in progress. But let's officially say this is Changing the Conversation, a podcast by African Leadership and the Mocha Club. And your hosts are Fallon Klug. I did. I'm going to say <laughs> Fallon Klug for the rest of my yeah, life. Yeah, you did the other day in the office. And I, like, I was said like, Klug? You did. And I'm I let sorry. it slide. I let it slide. But yeah, it's Klug. Fallon Klug. It's German. So this is hosted by Fallon, Klug, and Emily Blackledge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Black like the color, ledge like a ledge, as my husband would say. So yeah, we're here. We are here. And we're just excited to jump into this new world of podcasting, but we also believe it's an important thing to jump into. Yeah, I think the more you and I have spent time with people and groups in the last couple of years, the more we realize that a lot of the things we're talking about whether we're talking to college students or a Sunday school class or whether we're with a counseling program or we are um, talking about community development, there's kind of some universal truths to life that we just want to have a space to examine and talk about and bring to light and also um, do that with so many of the men and women who are passionate about working with us at African Leadership in the Mocha Club. Mm -hmm. Which, before we go too much further, who is African Leadership in Mocha Club? African Leadership and Mocha Club is an organization that has been around for about 20 years. We started in 2000, committed to investing in Africa, really through the lens of education. How do you walk alongside men and women who are locally doing things on their own um, and might just need a particular skill set to do that better or more effectively? Uh, so we walk with the men and women as they develop themselves and then from that build thriving and flourishing communities. The purpose of this podcast is really to continue to change the conversation, primarily in Africa or for Africa. That's where our hearts are, and we feel like there needs to be a change of kind of how people think mm -hmm. or perceive or recognize Africa and its people. Barrett Ward, the founder of Mocha Club, yes, he started Barrett. changing the conversation when he went to Africa and he experienced something different than he was expecting. If people have heard of Mocha Club before, they've heard that we talk about, I need Africa more than Africa needs me. Hmm. Did you have that experience the first time you went? Yes. On one hand, I love the idea that I need Africa more than Africa needs me. Um, on the other hand, I hate that it still keeps me at the center of that conversation. Mm. But the sentiment is true. What you learn can be very impactful to your life. I think it depends on the posture you take moving into something. I mean, you and I talk a lot about what people don't prepare for when they pack for international trips. You know, they're busy getting their uh, malaria meds and finding, I mean, I was with a girl yesterday, finding her DEET and bug spray and packing every conceivable pillow she may need. <laughs> um, and I get that. That's totally sure. important. But um, I think people don't spend a lot of time caring about how they view themselves and how they view um, the people they're going to go meet and be with. And I think at the heart of that phrase, I need Africa more than Africa needs me, is that mentality that when you go with a heart posture of learning and just wanting to experience what you find is um, richness and creativity and innovation and you find men and women who have dreams and longings and desires and who are also raising babies and don't like being up at night and don't like the heat any more than you do. And, mm -hmm. and they're real people. They're not subservient. They have plenty to teach us and build into us. So it can mm -hmm. kind of be a place where you learn to reshape your perspective of the world by being around people that help you consider a different perspective. That's what yeah. we're doing here. Totally. Where's the conversation now and where do we want it to go? There is a standing mentality that... Um, there's an us and a them. There are people that have the money and have the power and have the influence and have education. And then there are the people that don't. And somewhere in that, 
some of those realities are actually true. There are people with money and there are people without. But somewhere in that, because our culture values those things, money and power and influence and education, there's an inherent assumption then that if you don't have those things, you are lesser than. I'm challenged by this every time I go to Africa. Part of being human means that I'm going to always struggle to really find common ground, to to push past my assumptions and my perspective and my upbringing, the story that I hear in my own internal dialogue in my brain. Those things are telling me a system of priority or a system of value and worth that I don't necessarily believe is true. And so we want to have a conversation in particular about the continent of Africa and push into those things. How and why do we believe that they have dignity and value, that our friends are a part of participating with this divine and influencing and leveraging and fighting to build a better tomorrow, and that they're doing it in ways that we want to honor and uh, foster. And, you know, just like you were saying, if everybody has a seat at the table, then we mean everybody. So... Mm -hmm. Where is the space and the tension that exists between our dear friend Tito in South Sudan having value and adding impact to what we're doing and what value do I bring? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that he is greater than or that I am less, but it also doesn't mean that my money and my education and how I view the world is more valuable than his. So we hold intention, kind of the balance of those things. Mm -hmm. And I think what's really cool about changing the conversation primarily in Africa is it doesn't stop there. Like yeah. the communities that you're talking about that we see that seem needy or less than there are communities in Nashville where right. I can pinch myself and say, how dare you look at them and think that they are more needy than you are. Yeah. And so that conversation not only stays in Africa or between the United States and Africa, it's your neighbors around you. Gosh, it's in my home. I mean, I think about how often I can treat my three-year-old or look at my three-year-old and see my responsibility and what I'm doing for him and his neediness. Um, And I can forget the value that he's adding. I can forget the ways he delights in fireflies and what that can remind me of Mm -hmm. about the beauty and dignity of the world around us. And I can forget that he is always calling me to fun and laughter and play Somehow I can lessen that because I have tasks to do or dinner Mm. to make. Um, So Mm. it's just learning how to view the world that way, how to talk about Africa, how to talk about our marriages, how to talk about different subjects and begin to push and ask questions about how can we view these from multiple perspectives and gain a fuller picture, maybe whole picture of the Mm. world by looking at it from a lot of different angles. Yeah. You and I both feel a strong sense, and we've talked a lot about, like, we want to change the world. And then the next question is like, yeah, but how? And it just seems like an insurmountable longing that we have in the core of who we are. And I also think that it's a God-given desire to be a part of reconciling the world. And I think it's from the very beginning, there's an invitation in Scripture to participate with the Lord in Um, the divine work that he's doing. So at our core as human beings, we want to do that. We want to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. We want to leave a legacy. We want to have lasting value and impact. And that trait is not specific to Americans or Westerners. It's it's all over Africa and it's all over Russia and China and South America. So like you said, how do you find a seat at the table? And that's part of what we're always talking about at the Mocha Club is how do we enlarge the table and invite people into it? And I think the thing I learned, which I want other people to hear, is that there is a seat at Mm -hmm. the table for you. I think a lot of people don't feel qualified or don't know where to sit or feel like the table's way too small. And what I would say is, no, this table is so long and so wide, and there is a spot for everyone. Right. Preach it. Yeah. I found my spot. You found yours. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's way more seats around that need to be filled. Yeah. So as we talk about changing the conversation and all the ways and years in my brains kind of go in a million directions, like, oh, we could talk about this and talk about that. Mm -hmm. Um, Ultimately, we want to be doing this in front of a microphone because we want people to be listening. So what do you want a listener to take away from a conversation like this? Yeah, I think um, the first thing 
that I think about because I'm putting myself back into the seat of a listener is I want someone to hear a me too in this conversation mm-hmm. of understanding our heart posture and what we desire out of this, but also finding commonality of this is where we struggle too. And so that would be my first thing is that someone feels like they're a part of this conversation, that they're sitting yeah. in this room with us, and that in turn we're encouraging one another, that it's not us on a pulpit right, um, saying this is the way you should look or think or see, but it's, hey, do you feel this way too? Or are you experiencing this too? And knowing that we want to do a little bit better. Um, so that would be my hope. What about you? I appreciate the conversations that I have throughout my day and week where people are hearing a word come out of my mouth or watching my behavior and they just kind of poke at it. The other day, Rob and I were having a conversation about debt and paying things off and our budget, you know, all those yucky adult conversations that you look (laughs) at your children and go, don't grow up. (laughs) Anyway, I said, isn't it important to be like financially responsible? And isn't that being good stewards? And, you know, isn't that the Christian right thing to do? And he was just so intuitive and said, "Um, well, why do you want to do those things? And I said, well, I think that, you know, if we didn't have all this stuff hanging over our heads, we would just be more generous. And he said, so is your generosity contingent on your finances? Mm. I thought, man, you just poked a huge hole in my heart. Like you you unveiled to me, you could see in me um, a space that was tying my ability to be generous with my financial resources, and you were tying it specifically to a dollar in my checking account. And mm. um, I don't want my heart posture to be dictated by the circumstances that I'm in. Sure. Um I really love the conversations that I have throughout the week that do that, that poke and expose and challenge and question very lovingly and very kind um, and don't demand that I fix them and don't necessarily say that my perspective or what I want or long for is wrong or needs to be altered, but instead just kind of asking me to consider it from a different perspective and care about things that might be the undercurrent. So that's what I want this podcast to be about. I want this to be a place where, yeah, we're just looking at one another and going, is that really that way? Does it have to be that way? Mm -hmm. So moving forward, what can people expect when they tune in and listen? We've just started a long list of all of the people and conversations that we've had um, that have been changing our conversation or challenging it. And so uh, we're going to talk with some of our friends and colleagues across Africa. Um, Awesome conversations about war or about raising children or making juice. I mean, there's just some really fun conversations to have. We're going to talk to men and women like you who've been a part of the Mocha Club for literally decades, plural, and um, asking them about where they've pushed in in their own lives and how they've taken a seat at the table and what they're doing with their time and how they're leveraging who they are to change the world and make it better. And so, um, yeah, I'm just really excited about the people and possibilities for where we can go and what we can talk about, like a myriad of subjects from money to kids to mental health to war and the different beautiful cultures of Africa. And I've gotten to listen in on some of these conversations with Tito and Jeffrey and Gosh, they are as hilarious as they are yeah. deep. <laughs> yes, so, which is um, fun. That's the best combination. So we have so much coming up that we want to share that are, again, important conversations that we think others should tune in on. And I'm excited. I hope Me others too. are excited too. I know. You kind of now know who African Leadership and Club are to an extent. But if you want to learn more, please visit us on our website www.africanleadershipinc.org and then themochaclub.org that'll give you an overview and just more details on who we are and what we do day to day and how you can get involved and we've kind of touched on this before but we have a community of givers that make this whole thing happen we have thousands of people that commit to give every month to see local leaders educated and to see clean water wells built and to see schools funded and so um, if you get excited about those things there's a seat at the table for you yeah so become a member join us we have members in every state it's in impressive. the united states of america and we, we have some in all. other countries oh yeah Isn't we should go cool? visit all of them we should 
little tour day. Both mm-hmm. of them members. It would be more than a day. Um, so yeah, if you guys have uh, enjoyed our conversation today, if you've enjoyed the topics and listening, please share. Um, subscribe to future episodes. We have a lot mm-hmm. coming up that um, we're just so excited to release to y'all. So please subscribe so you make sure to listen in. Give us reviews. Leave comments. Can they be nice? Do yeah, be it? very nice. Be very nice. <laughs> um, leave reviews. Let us know what you think. Yeah, um, yeah we want to hear from you. Literally, like Emily said, we wish we had 50 more mics in here. So your mic can be a discussion board, a review on iTunes. So please let your voice be heard and We're excited to continue this conversation. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us on our first episode of Changing the Conversation. See you guys soon. Bye.